In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace some motor bearings. And all I'm going to do is show you the process that we've done to replace a couple of bearings. Before we continue, remember, if you find the material in this video too technical, please watch earlier videos where I cover basic electrical knowledge. Keep in mind that the first 28 videos are best understood if you follow their sequential order. Now, back to our video. So we got a bad motor, just gonna remove the breaker head, screw it, and it comes out. That was easy. Not coming out? To get the fan blade out, they actually apply uh, the fan blade with the um, chain hole, they lift it and the fan blade just came off. And after that they remove the screws that hold the motor in place and the motor just dropped. So to remove the fan blade, pretty much what we did is, uh, I wasn't here to record it, but uh, we tie straps. And then the straps were tied to this, and as we lift it up, it just would bang to the sides of this and it drop off. Then after that, after I'm doing all those screws and whacking the motor a little bit, the motor just came off. So now we got the motor here on the workbench and you can clearly, clearly tell that the bearings are bad, so we are replacing the bearings. So I'm gonna, first I'm going to remove the bearing cap holders and then the actual uh, end bell caps. We got those over here, end bell cap bolts and the bearing ho cap holder there. Hi. Take it off. Now we're going to use the chisels, unfortunately don't have two hands so I'm going to be banging on this side and another side and with that we're just going to pry it off. So for our case, uh, we just got off our, uh, we separated and the whole photo came out. So we're going to have to separate it from the bearing cup holder. No, the bearings. And this is the other bearing cup holder. Uh, that one obviously came in. Uh, and then there's the bearing. And the other side, you can see what is back over there. So we are using a big bearing puller to pull uh, hard because it didn't come on as easy as it's coming out. And it is so bad that the bevin broke off and the ball bevins are just falling off. And that is a bevin cup holder. This is the bearing. Oh, shoot. Sure. Uh, that take that back. This is the bearing itself is stuck in there. And the other part is over here. We'll get it out. So, I'm not saying that this is the bearing, but it should look like that. This part is that, yeah. and this part is that. So, yeah, it's bad. It's broken. So with a little bit of ingenuity, we were able to remove the seized bevin in there and we found chunks of steel of bevin stuck at different places. Now we're going to use a pea grinder, just like the book says, to remove this bevin or this part of the other part of the bevin. Make sure that the grease cap holder is always clean before you put the bevins. Some of the tools that I use so far is this uh, is bevin removal. So this goes on the shaft, and then this one's over here comes in and grabs the uh, bevin. And as you are tightening that side, it just it just pulls and pushes in and pulls away, and that way removing the bevins. Now, a moment ago we actually put it backwards, okay, because we were trying to go from the inside and grab to be able to pull this guy. 
it's very important to tie this not too tight but definitely uh, they cannot be loose because if you if you had them loose whenever you put the bevin puller it will start twisting to, this, to one side or to the other side for this cis bevin this bevin retainer which that's the bevin again uh, even this uh, little thing that is supposed to hold the bevin retainer in place it got so much heat that it self welded itself and I'm having to use one of these things and kind of like get myself in between and hit it with the hammer just to be able to break off um, like I said it's uh, welded itself to it so before I am able to unscrew the bevin retainer, re retainer I'm gonna have to totally release this little holder to be able to remove this I actually had to put this on a vise I put all racks to protect it and cramp it really good and then use a spinal wrench that it just fits perfectly to rotate it and then at the same time I put a little pipe wrench so that we could give it a lot more torque and now we're able to come up this is the bevin retainer and this is the is the lock for the bevin retainer once it be in place you're supposed to bend one of these ones so that this will not uh, unscrew itself. And finally, this is our bearing, our seize bearing. So, this is a bearing that we are removing, and obviously, we had to remove the retention ring. Uh, so now, we should be able to unscrew it. Okay, screw it. We can use a, a channel, um, a spanner wrench, but if we don't have one, this method just works as equally fine, sometimes even better than the spanner wrench. This bearing over here, uh, the way how it fell is because, well, it's missing a whole bunch of uh, the ball bearings, as you can see. Since the bearing is seized, we're gonna use the P grinder to cut into it three quarters all the way down, and then we're gonna pop it. Okay. <laughs> so, and here we got the we got the two cuts that the book calls for. No way. We should, do what, we should do what Chang said. Uh, no, rotate it towards me. No, 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 the other way. Yeah. Alright, so the book doesn't call this, but somebody told us about it. <laughs> Bro, you still gotta use the. Uh... I go. Oh, look at that, success. Time to be fine. Go, go, Easy, let me squeeze. Yeah. Makes our job easier. And there it is. Voila. Wow. So here we got some bearings. And actually, both of 
This is for the big one, that's for the small one, but we're not gonna use these ones, we're gonna be finding, and this is what is called a sealed bearing. This one does not use grease. And in actual fans, we cannot lubricate them once they are running, so therefore, this is the one we're gonna use. This bearing over here, even if one side was sealed, but if the other side was open, then you still call them um, uh, unsealed bearings and therefore they need to be able to be installed on the piece of gear that you would be able to grease. According to the PMS cars, they grease every year and a half for most motors. So with bearings and their, their sizes. All right, so what number I'm looking at? at this, this one is a 306. Even though you disregard the six, that's the placeholder. 306 okay. is bearing size. This one is also 306, but this is a KDD. So there's, there's different uh, numbers at the end, but this is for sealed okay. bearing. Okay. So they're both size 306, which is the inner size and the outer is the same. Um, and then this is a sealed. This is the DD is double sealed. Some you have one seal and the other side is open. Mm -hmm. So that would both, be a D. Th that would be a D. This is DD for both sides are sealed. Now we're gonna hit the bearing. This is the new bearing, obviously. Just wrap it in there. And then it's gonna be in the oven. The oven is gonna be at 203 plus or minus 10 degrees. Properly seated. Well, that's good. Yep. Nice. After the bearing is installed, make sure that you put some more foil paper into it so that the uh, it cools down evenly. So I'm gonna leave it in there for about half an hour until it cools down. The way to tell if a bearing is seated all the way, it's uh, there is a neck over here uh, where. It becomes even smaller, kind of like this way. Uh, so it is already seated at that little neck, so therefore the bearing is all the way down there. And here is where it's gonna go our spider ring. Which so I had tried to slide the bearing into here three times, and three times it gets stuck. And as I felt, it turns out it got these little birds. I'm gonna go ahead and remove them with sandpaper. going all right it just came from the oven now that is an open bear open end bearing so we have to grease it before we continue hold on let me clean this one kind of bent Oh, this will get fixed because of that thing will go tight, right? Alright, after you straighten all the teeth, then you can just install it exactly just the way how he's doing it. Uh, notice that the teeth are actually facing away from the bearing. No, uh, the, that's the wrong way. Uh, turn it around and go down. Now start. So that's the. Uh, a spanner wrench really works great too. And that's, uh, well, uh, as common sense dictates, to prevent the bearing from moving out of place. The last step is to find one of the spider ring legs and bend it in into the spider knot in one of the groups that actually matches. I don't know what's the proper way of putting grease, but this is how we, this is how I've always done it. 
Now, we definitely clean all that up. So, put grease into the uh, bearing holder of the uh, front uh, of the end belt. This part over here is gonna couple to the other end, so this doesn't need any grease. That's why we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clean that. Uh, for the bearing holder, instead of using, trying to fish in these little guys, uh, which is what actually holds the whole cup together, I use these long rods and I just fish this thing through it. All right. So, the cord over here. So I got them over there, I, I got them aligned, and now I'm going to bolt, and the last thing I'm going to do, I right, so. Now I took the time and I aligned the bolts and tied them up, and my bearing cup is in there, so it's time to align it. So as you can see, it can go pretty far, so I'm going to pull it, so I grab in and I pull as hard as I can and I shake it a little bit just to get the bearing cap a little close and as I'm pulling one side I'm trying to get the thread to definitely be within the distance of the length of the uh, bolt so now I can safely pull in my bolt and I know that it will actually start threatening trad in. Once I get one side in then that's when I take out the other thread I mean the other rod, trader rod should I say, and I just simply start tightening that one. Now at this point on what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, tightening and going back and forth between the two of them so that the bearing cap evenly starts to suck in. Okay. And then slowly I pull in the bearing cap. Wait, go up, go up, go down, stop right there, go down slowly, slowly, alright, that's the one, go ahead. Time to put our bearing cup holder uh, together, so go ahead and do it please, uh, it's sitting all the way down there, see, it came up, pull it up, and now, you, now he's going to undo one of them and pull one of the screws. Usually this process takes electricians even up to half an hour, but not, no longer. With this method, it only took literally, well, it's not done yet, but it's gonna take about a total of two, maybe three minutes. Now we're gonna put these covers to prevent dirt from getting into it. In the past, I have had issues with this thing. If it goes down too low, it gets stuck in here. So I try to be conservative and not put it all the way down and set the allen wrenches in there really tight so it doesn't move and that's the the reason of this thing is to prevent dirt from getting inside there as you already know the fan blade is going to go here and it's going to and sometimes it will be blowing stuff in between those cracks Something that I forgot to mention at the beginning is that I mark the places so that I will know how everything will go back together. So this goes with this mark over here. And in that way, when I put it together, I put it together exactly the same way how I found it. So now I got my motor lined up and I'm trying to get it to set it in. I'm using the screws, or oh, I'm sorry, bolts, to help me with my alignment as I, in a very even way, try to get it finally sit in place. By the way, this is a mallet, okay? So it's not really. It's rubber, and as you can see, the motor is slowly closing, and it is closing right because, like I said, the screws are working as a guide. Now, if you can get it through the hole, you can. So, as you can see. We are 
loading the motor with a chain fold. Well, actually, the casing. We're lowering the casing so we can actually Fucking get the perfect. motor. perfect. We just simply use rope to that you see. about bearings I do want to touch about frames so this is the state of a motor that is about to get rewind and the frame is this part now different motors have different frames this one over here is frame 48Z this larger motor used for CHT systems This is a, fr a frame 215. Yet we got a larger motor over there. And this one, well, as you can see, is a frame 236. This frame over here was for a motor that has a double shaft because it had two pumps, one for water and one for oil. And it's for our diesel. This is what I mean. That is my oil pump and that is my water pump. So, one motor driving two different pumps. Now, you see that this frame is painted different. That's because this frame came from a fan core unit. The fan core unit, on one side had an end belt, no shaft sticking out, only the shaft sticking on one side. That because it was the same frame, and the RPMs match, we were able to swap our frames. Here is the end belt that uh, used to be on that frame, the one that is running that, and a keep warm pump. The keep warm pump it is very important because it provides, it gives the ability to start our emergency diesel generator at any time. So it was a high priority to get that thing fixed, and therefore we took out well these things which we didn't need. And this frame, which it used to be the one that used to be down there. Uh, the windings were burned, so therefore we just swap them out. The only conditions is that, first of all, it has to be the same frame and the windings have to be winded for the same amount of RPMs of the motor that you're going to uh, try to uh, replace the frame with.